Hey guys, what's up? Oh, did you see that bone on my head? Yeah, I kind of did a bonehead thing the other day. Uh, this X-Tech multimeter. Well, it's an insulation meter. So, uh, David, I don't know if I can, he wants me to say his whole name, so just say David. Left a comment and said he thought I had the probes connected wrong. And I did. <laughs> so, uh... Here, let me disconnect this one. So normally, you know, I'd go from common to one of the other ones, but I forgot on this meter, you go between these two. And I haven't, I don't use this meter very often. I used it for a while doing uh, high pots on low cost, real inexpensive meters, just to show that even a thousand volts, they don't break down. But I just don't use it that often comes in this nice case it's a nice meter so thank you David <laughs> Gosh. anyway so besides that the video that I did checking things out I did I was going through the right motions just had the meter hooked up wrong so we're gonna go through real quick and take actual measurements so you can see what they actually look like okay got my little GoPro little camera here so a little different setup here. Let's just jump in and do this thing. All right, guys. So first I want to point out that I have the leads in the proper spot on this meter. Okay. Let me get it situated here. So I've got the negative down here and I've got the positive up here. Okay. It says insulation plus here, insulation minus here. Okay. So now we're set up. I've got it set there. Now, what I've done before, now, first of all, I've got the leads right here. You can see on X3 and X2, all right? So you can see they're on X3 and X2. So I'm I'm checking between these two windings, make sure they're isolated from each other. They should be, you know, isolated, right? So let's check it out. We're starting at 500 volts, okay? Now I could just hold this down or I can hit this lock button, hold it for a moment, and it says lock up here, and then hit it. Now it's gonna go off for a while and do it, okay? So I've already done this for over a minute, so we're just gonna stop it. So I hit the lock. And that way I don't have to touch anything. You don't wanna to touch anything when you're doing high voltage, right? So let's do a thousand volts. Okay, now let's do the lock. And I'm gonna time this for one minute, but I'm gonna speed through this so you guys don't have to agonize. All right, so now I'm going to go from X3 to chassis, which this, this lead right here is connected to chassis, okay? So I'm gonna take this off. And I'll tie it to this, okay? Now we're gonna just start off at a thousand. We're just gonna go for the gusto. Well, sorry, let's put in lock mode. There we go. And you can see the test voltage is 1028. All right, let's stop that. All right, so now let's swap the lead. No, well, actually, I'll just move this one over to there, okay? So now we're gonna check the other coil. So what we're doing is, all right, so we just checked X3, and now the screen's tied to it, so at the same time we're checking that, we're checking the screen at the same time to chassis. Now we're going to X2, X1, okay? So we're checking that winding to chassis. Let's do that. I'm gonna lock it, okay. Okay, we're gonna unlock it. All right, so this side looks good. I'm gonna swing the transformer around so we can look at the other side. All right, so before I do that, let's see if we see any excitement. I've got these on the power cord this time, okay? The black and the white. It doesn't really look white anymore, but anyway, 
And I'm going to just go hit a thousand, but I have a feeling we're going to see a problem. Let's just check and see. I'm just going to hold it down. Actually, it's looking, I'm surprised. Now, the thing is, is I think there's some cracks in the insulation here. So if I moved them around, they would probably break down. But anyway, I am surprised they even did that well. All right, let's go ahead and start off with the power cord on this one. Okay, let's go ahead. And I'll hold it down. Wow, I'm impressed. I would not trip. I, I do not trust that power cord. Now, they are spread away a little bit, so they're not touching. But anyway, I'm still still impressed. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to go between the two windings again. This time we're on the H side. Okay, this time we're on the H side. So we're going between H2 and H3. So we're checking the isolation between these two. Okay, so let's do that. Okay. Okay, I'm going to lock it, and I'm going to hit it. Okay, let's unlock it. Okay, everything's fine there. Now, let's go between H. We're going to go between H3, which is tied to the screen, to chassis. So, we'll be testing the chassis. Okay, this time we're going to go between H3 and chassis. So we'll begin the winding on H3 along with the screen to chassis, okay? Okay, so I just went right to the terminal this time. Okay, let's lock it. Okay, let's unlock it. All right, so let's go ahead and move this to H2. All right, so H2 is just this other winding. So we're going to check that between that and chassis. Make sure it's okay. Lock it. And hit it. All right, I'm going to unlock it. All right. All right, so we check the screens on both sides along the two windings because the screen's tied to one of the windings. We check between those and the chassis. Everything's open. The windings between themselves are open. So nothing's shorted together. So the last thing to do is check uh, windings on this side to windings on this side, okay? So we're going to start with uh, H2 on this side, and we're going to go to one of the windings over here. I'll go to X3. All right, guys, so I've got it on the X3 on the other side, so let's check this between those. I'll lock it and then hit it. All right, let's unlock it. Okay, I'm going to move it to... So we checked... H2 to X3, so that winding is okay with these. So now we're going to try, uh, all right, so let's, okay, so what we're going to do is I moved it. So now we're going to check H3 with the screen. Make sure that winding and the screen are also isolated from X2, okay? So I moved over here to H3, moved over here to H3. Okay, let's lock it. Okay, there we go. All right. All right, let's unlock that. Okay. All right, so what we know is all these windings and the shield are isolated from the X2. So now I'm going to go to X4 over here, and we're going to check between H3, the shield, to X4 in the shield. So we're going to check these two. Okay, guys, I actually had it on X3. So we just got done checking both of these windings to this side, X3, that's also tied to the shield. So we know that all these are open from this one. So now let's move to X2 and we'll check uh, 
H3 to X2. Okay, I'm locking it. Okay, and we're gonna hit it. Okay, I'm gonna unlock it. Okay guys, so now we know both these windings are open from H3 to H4 and the shield. So all the windings and the shield is okay to that one. But now I want to compare to H2, this winding right here. All right, so I'm going to lock it. And I'm going to hit it. Okay, let me unlock it. All right, so we're checking this winding on the other side, X2, X1, and we had it on H2, okay? And I think we've checked everything, so I think we're good. I'm gonna put on H3, let's check that one more time. Did I checked that, I can't remember. I'm gonna do it right now. All right, let me unlock that. Okay, so we've checked all the combinations of this side to the chassis. They're all open. We checked all the combinations of this side to chassis. They're all open. We checked this winding to both of those. They're open. This winding to both of those, and they're open. And then we checked both those two to these two. So we just thoroughly went through everything and everything's open. So that's pretty amazing. All right, guys, so there you go. So that was a little quicker way to go through it. If last, I think the last time, even editing that, I was getting confused all the different things I was doing. So hopefully <laughs> this was more concise, made more sense and all that kind of stuff. As far as the way the transformers hooked up, you can do 120, 240, put them in series for 240, 120, you put them in parallel. That way you can get all the power you want out of this. I think the reason they had it hooked up wrong the first time is because they had uh, the chassis hooked to that winding with the screen on it. So essentially they're tying the neutral to chassis. Uh, on the output side, you might do that depending on how you want to set it up. If you're going to recreate your your neutral to ground bond on whatever you're tying to this. But on the input, no, no, that's a definite no, no, never do that. You only have one tie from neutral to ground uh, at the service entrance. You don't do it on the input to anything. Yeah, you just never re recreate that, guys. It's like putting, you know, those audio guys that put new ground rods on and do, that's a no, no, safety, there's no benefit at all as far as noise and all that kind of stuff. So there's nothing. Yeah, there's, I've done, I talk about this stuff all the time, but yeah, anyway. So, but you do want uh, the third wire when you're bringing it into the plug to tie the chassis for sure. You want this chassis to be the same potential as all the other chassis, right? Safety, okay. <sighs> On the output side, uh, you have options. The screens are uh, from the diagram are tied to one of the windings, the re like the return side of the one of the windings on each side. So essentially it's shorting itself to one of those windings. So there's no capacitance between that and that secondary or the primary side or the screen on the secondary side to the secondary windings. And then the screens between each other are, you know, there's not gonna be much capacitance. So the other way to do it is to take both those screens and go to chassis. So you can go to chassis with both those screens. So, uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think. I've experimented in the past, and, you know, I don't know. I don't know if I've seen a difference. I could try it on this one, and depending on how you wind them, how you layer them, it could make a difference, but I could measure the capacitance between primary and secondary and try... Uh, yeah, I could do that with the screens. I could, I could experiment. So if you guys want to see that kind of thing, let me know, but I'm ready to rebuild this sucker with the proper, you know, knockouts with the, uh, yeah. So anyway, I'm going to rebuild this thing. 
with the cables now i'm going to cut back this cable to see how far back the damage went if you saw the other video you know what i'm talking about if you didn't you might want to see the other video but anyways thanks for watching guys oh and the other video i took inductance readings so if you want to see the inductance resistance readings those were done correctly because i yeah so there you go thanks for watching guys uh sometimes we got to put our bonehead hat on and and admit to our mistakes and redo it so there you go i did it <laughs> thanks for watching guys see you next time oh hit the like button if you like it that really helps a lot subscribe appreciate it okay we'll see you next time